Yeah, we lucked out getting Gelb after a Panthers win instead of a Rangers win. Woo-hoo! Good. Woohoo! Zach Gelb is on the Toyota of Hollywood Hotline. He can be heard nationally every weekday on the Infinity Radio Network. He is based in New York. He's an unabashed Rangers fan. He's very sad about last night. Are you very sad about last night, Gelb? Well, they did what they needed to do, and that was split in Florida. So with the way that they've been playing, I'll take that this series is at two apiece. Uh, The only one I'm really mad at is actually just Solana. Like when I saw those rats getting thrown on the ice last night, I thought they were throwing Solana on the ice because he resembles a rat these days. <laughs> oh, he's scared. Why, punk what ass. is going Better on here? Why, why? You are You're a, a punk p- ass. Wow. Dude. What is happening here? What happened between you and Solana during this series? Oh, Solana told me, me that uh, that you were going to be fired up about him. Well, So I'm enjoying myself. I'm at a bachelor party. I'm watching the game. And the Rangers uh, – Oh, no, it was after game one. That's what it was when they lost. And he starts firing me off, like, different text messages of Bobrovsky when the Heat lose every year. I don't send the messages of, like, Pat Riley and Eric Spolstra and Jimmy Butler and all those losers. Like, I don't do that. So it's, like, one of those things where I know he doesn't actually care about hockey. This is my team. This is the team I care about. And he starts just texting me over and over and over again. And then I don't hear anything from that cockroach after game two or three. And then he pops up again last night on my Twitter feed. He's a pain in the ass. I love Solana, but he's a royal pain in the ass. You know what we should be throwing instead of rats? Those trash Katz's Deli sandwiches. All Panther fans should just be throwing those. Dude, you are a one-trick pony. You are a one-trick pony. If it wasn't for Katz's Deli, you would have no material. Come up with something new. I stand with Solana on this. I love getting underneath yeah. someone's because skin. Because this show he is uh, the blind leading the blind. Gotten under yours, man. I am so. I have oh. never been more proud of Solana than and I am right I'll now. Admit to it. hear that he was peppering you with texts and gifs after uh, after game one. And to be quite honest, I love the fact that you called him a punk ass <laughs> with anger. <laughs> well, here's what annoys me. So, like, I have a lot of friends that are Devils fans. And I also have friends that are Islanders fans. And they're afraid that the Rangers are going to win the cup. And, and and even Flyers fans, too. So they all start texting me before this series is even over. Oh, Rangers are winning the cup. They're winning this series. Just so, like, I don't throw it back in their face. I want to just text them and be like, I'm not going to throw this back in, in, in your face. That's not on my priority list if the Rangers go on to win the cup. It's just to be happy and to celebrate this championship. So when Solana doesn't really care about the Panthers, and he can't even remember what game he went to in the playoffs, uh, which we were talking off the air, it was just annoying. It was like whack-a-mole. He popped up, and I just wanted to smack him off my phone and block him. Ah, whack-a-mole. I love you, Solana. Because I, I do the same thing to Pizzola, you know, for Maple Leafs games or anything that goes on in Canada. I always just text, oh. just fire off text to him. And I know that he doesn't get any enjoyment out of it. He doesn't want to hear from me except when he's on the show. And I love that. And, and to be fair, I, I had a probably too many drinks at game one because I was in a suite. And the fact that they didn't win, I had too many drinks and not enough food, which I probably should have ate more. And then Solana just starts texting and blowing up my phone. I was like, enough of this a-hole, all right? It's not my <laughs> fault Lafreniere doesn't know which goal to score in, Gelb. I mean, I mean, yeah. <laughs> well, the right have you watched Lafreniere? the series? Because he's starting to look like he knows what goal to score. And if you actually pay attention. <laughs> we, got him, we got him one other night. <laughs> that is is Crowder so coming well. to game five? You were talking about that. Are you going to the Garden tomorrow night? No, I'm in Dallas now, and then oh. I got to go to D.C. I'm going. He to only the White goes House. where the weather is terrible. How's the weather in New York? Is it okay? Because he only flies where it's going to take him 14 hours to land. Eight, 80 degrees and sunny today. Beautiful. I day. flew in really? Dallas yesterday with hail storms and tornadoes. I don't. I don't. I don't make good decisions. They so get what? hail in Dallas. <laughs> oh, Dallas got like I mean pounded oh, with really? bad weather. Yeah. yeah. 11, what? It took uh, me 11 so, hours to get to Dallas. Who, 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 what are you in Dallas interviewing Dak Prescott for the pivot? <laughs> that cake jumping on. I mean, with that oh, fanatics money now. I love you. I I thought we might see him courtside last night at the Mavericks game with that Fanatics money. I mean, he's got the direct line to Michael Rubin. All of a yeah. sudden, he's uh, he's sitting courtside. Check, check doesn't star. hit till the first of next month. <laughs> Big star. Um, has the series, you know, it, it's 2-2, and now it's a three-game series. Has it played out the way that you kind of imagined that it would have? 
I, I said going into the Rangers going to win in seven, but I did preface that by saying before the playoffs did start, and I still believe it, that the Panthers pound for pound are the best team in hockey. So the the overwhelming part is how much of the puck the Panthers have controlled. So with how much they've been in the Rangers zone, and this series is still 2-2 with Panera not getting a goal, Zabanejad and Kreider not getting a single point so far in this series, I'm not going to tell you that this is a lock the Rangers win the series because I truly do believe this is a coin flip. But now it's a, a best of three, and the Rangers' big stars haven't showed up. So I would think if Igor continues to play at the level that he is and then your forwards actually produce, then this is a, a chance that the Rangers uh, have a good chance to go to the final. Like, I'm still confident. I still feel good. Yeah, are you surprised it all had it played out? Because, like, my thing is I like I – like- games and series to get dirty get nasty it's, yeah. it's it's more of a pleasant series are you surprised how it's playing out uh, I think that this has been a very physical series um I will say you know the the Panthers uh I know everyone wants to focus on Jacob Truba and uh that hit which I didn't think was actually that bad and shouldn't have been a major they didn't call it that uh but the Panthers aren't afraid to go at it after after the whistle as well and we know that they're are, are one of the most physical teams in the league so I think this has just been a fun back and forth series where you can't predict it, right? Game one, I don't think, was as bad as what the score did indicate. Uh, game two, the Rangers were able to steal one. They stole one in game three. And then last night, the Panthers were able to grab it back. And now it's a best of three with the home ice is in favor of the Rangers because it's oh. going to be three straight home games. Because let's be real, that Florida crowd, uh, I know that this gets under uh, oh, Solana's skin it. when he was stop trying to it. justify how many Heat fans there were in a playoff game this year stop when no one it. was even there. Uh, there's more. There's a ton of Ranger fans in that building. There's a lot of Rangers fans, but yeah. it is not home a game. home game for home the game. Rangers by any stretch. Of I was hearing Igor chance last night. Home How game. dare you? How dare you? <laughs> Shesterkin has been really good. It comes down, and Bobrovsky's been fine too. I think yeah. Shesterkin's been a little bit better. But it really comes down, if you can get it to overtime, you need, you know, one lucky break to, to get the dub. And it's what happened with the Panthers last night. Well, look at last night. So, for example, in the first period, the Rangers outplayed the Panthers. Then the Panthers woke up in the second period, but they weren't able to get goals until they got that crazy fortuitous bounce in front of the net. And then even the other goal was fortuitous as well. It's not like they fully beat Igor Shostak in the last goal that uh, they did. And they got a good uh, penalty. Uh, Mika made a, a bad decision. You got to send that puck um, on the net or toward the net. He didn't do that. It was a turnover. I have no problem with Wheeler taking the penalty. Quite frankly, I would have rather have a penalty shot called because then it's uh, one guy on Igor Shostak, and he makes a save, then there's no power play. Once they got the power play, uh, I, I thought for sure the Panthers were going to cash it, and they did to their credit. I was surprised that wasn't a penalty shot. I don't, I don't know the – like, for from what I understood about the rules, he was I in thought front it should of have everyone. Been, yeah. I, I thought it should have been um, at the end of regulation when the Panthers definitely took one penalty. It should have been two um, if that was five or six minutes beforehand, they would have called that, but they weren't going to call the hold on Zibanejad and the trip on Kreider with 10, 15 seconds to go. It's just like the same thing in the NBA where you've kind of swallowed the whistles late. Let me uh, shift over to the NBA for a second because Solana and I, I love Dallas. I think Dallas who? is... I you and who? Solana and I, who? we do <laughs> not think the hype about Boston is worthy. And Crowder loves what hype? Crowder's Boston, like the best team in the NBA was Boston in the regular season or the best team in the NBA right now. But, but I don't let me ask it. you this. What, what hype? Because I do think the Celtics are winning the finals because it's going to be up against Dallas. And I just think it's the Celtics time. I think that's going to be a phenomenal series. But for the most part, I think most people's takes have been, well, Jimmy Butler was hurt. Then you had Donovan Mitchell hurt. Halliburton missed two games. The Celtics haven't been tested. This was a buy to the NBA Finals, and now ultimately getting these final four wins uh, in this series is going to be championship or bust. If they get them, it's a super duper success, and if they don't, it's it's a failure of a season. So I think people have been a little overly critical of the Celtics. They can't play the way that they've been playing uh, up against Dallas to well, win. That, that, but that's but, but I think point. they're going to come along. That's my point. Like they have the odds on favorites in Vegas to win the NBA finals, be. whether they face Minnesota or Dallas. And I don't see it because I'm with you. I don't think they've been tested during mm -hmm. this run to the NBA finals. And 
Indiana was missing Tyrese Halliburton for half the series. Indiana could have been up 3-1 at one point easily. So, so I'll just say this to Crowder, and maybe it's a little bit different because it's football, but I'm sure Crowder has gone up against teams where he knew they could play an average game and they could still be better than the other team. Now in the NBA, this is series. So you could afford to have an off night or you could afford not to show up in the fourth quarter and still get the job done. And even if you lose one game, like they did up against Miami and the Cavs in game two, it's not going to come back to haunt them. They haven't played legitimate competition yet in the playoffs. And I just got to think with adding Drew Holiday, who's a championship player, probably getting Christoph Porzingis back. We'll see how healthy he is. Tatum and Brown with how close they've been. Eventually they got to cash through, right? And if they don't, then they'll be like the way that we view Lamar Jackson and Josh Allen right now in the NFL or all those Bills teams that kept on getting there, getting there, and getting there and coming up small. But it's a, like that whole thing about they've never been tested, well, they can't decide who they play in the East. Exactly. The East was beat up. So, but they're mm-hmm. still talent wise, with Porzingis coming back, if he doesn't play till the, you know, till the next series, they have the rest. They've only yeah. played a handful of games where now Dallas has to go through seven game series. And I do believe Minnesota's about to uh, steal another one. So they're going to have at least a six game series. So now they're healthy, they're rested, and they're more talented than yeah. either team that comes out mm. the West. And, and here's why I like Boston. You think Bo- Let me interrupt yeah. one second. You think go Boston ahead. is more talented than yes. Luka and Kyrie? Yes. I think Jason they're, I think they're more Brown. They have a more well-rounded team. Overall, uh, Al Horford, uh, Porzingis, these guys, Drew, Raleigh, they're all there. Derek they White. Can all play. Dallas Derek, has the top Derek two White. players in that series, right? Derek if White you were seeding the players in that series. <sighs> Luke is the best player in the series. Uh, oh, Tatum, Tatum and Kyrie is an excellent conversation. But, but just think- based on what you've seen in the playoffs, in the postseason this year, Kyrie is blowing Kyrie, Jason yeah. Tatum away. He dropped 16 the other night. I lost. Oh, yeah, that, that's that's a one. That's a one. That's a one game. Uh, <laughs> one game aberration. Well, we've come to a standstill. Well, I, I thought you were going to continue. No, I was just saying that Luka. if you were seeding the players, Dallas has the two best players in that series. Luca. Yeah. So here, here's Tatum, the thing. Though. That's in one the, two in the NBA this year. So we all went into the playoffs thinking the Nuggets were going to win, and then they didn't. Then it's okay. Minnesota's going to win. And I do believe a lot of people will be like Hawk and Solana once the Mavericks take care of the Timberwolves that will now say Dallas is going to win. Whoever we shift momentum to, they end up losing in this postseason. And Boston has just been the best team in the league. No one gave them any ounce of credit, nor should they, because it's not about what they did in the regular season. It's not about getting to the finals, it's about winning these next four games. I just look at Boston. This series, I think it's going six or seven. I do believe it's going to be super duper close. I would not surprise me the Mavericks win. I just think it's a Celtics time. And, and they'll turn up and take it to a different gear. Yeah, I now just, in the that's, that's the part that I find folly, which is, yep, I haven't seen anything from them yet in the postseason, but I believe they'll turn it on when they need to. And I, I'm like, well, wouldn't you like to see something? Well, how is it any it? different? Like, like, shouldn't they have beaten up on every opponent? I mean, the, the Heat, without Jimmy Butler, took a game from them. Okay, so they still won in five. So it was a gentleman's sweep. H- here's the thing, though. How is it any different than when you see what you see out of Miami in the regular season, and then you have Solana getting on here saying, oh, the Heat, this is what they do. They're going to come alive in the playoffs. Like, I-, I think it's very similar. Because it's the exact opposite. You You saw them really play well during the regular season when no one else cares, and all of a sudden when it's the postseason, you're kind of like, huh, that team stinks. But look how much criticism we're giving them, and they've only lost two games so far in the postseason. Two. Yeah, but they've been playing Solana's JCC teams. I mean, let's be <laughs> so, honest. So, so let me. So they haven't lost a game. And let's say they, they swept, swept, swept. Would you have a different feel about this? Two games is the difference for you? Um, No, because I think they looked super vulnerable See, against this is Indiana. The thing. They're, I, they're I, in I thought no, they looked they're very in a vulnerable. No-win position. The Celtics are in a no-win position this year until they raise the championship trophy, and that's how it should be. They don't yeah, deserve any credit. Boston, and Boston stinks. Hawk, I'm more with you than, than you think. Th- they don't deserve an ounce of credit until they raise the championship trophy. Which they will not. And I hope that they do, and I hope Jason Tatum gets to the podium and goes, Solana, you don't have one of these trophies. You suck. What? Oh, you're a punk ass. <laughs> you're a punk ass. That's a pretty good one. I don't know where I pulled punk ass from. Punk <laughs> ass great. cockroach. That, that was strong. I love you, Solana. I mean, he was big, I'm, I'm a good, I'm a good karma person. Big smooch to Solana. 
<laughs> all the no, all the best. No, no. You can't do that for an entire segment and then go, oh, we're buddies. Hey, uh, I, I, I misremembered buddy. what happened in the first 15 minutes. I emotionally blacked out when I got on this show. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you torched him. No, I can't sorry. torch him. That You I'm torched him. You can't do that. That was and a little go, flag hey, football. Good, all right, and give him a noogie. Yay, yeah, that was good. a little so flag right. football. It wasn't that bad. We're just too soft now in society. You can't make you any jokes. Call him a punk ass and a cockroach. <laughs> Come on, Hawk. A punk ass? That's not that bad. I could have said a lot worse. You're going to have to block me if the Rangers lose game five. That's all I'm telling you. Literally, just block my number. Not a bad idea. I should probably do it either way. Yeah, not a bad idea regardless. <laughs> Zach Gelb, you can hear him every weekday, Infinity Radio Network. Thank you, Gelby. All the love, guys, especially Solana. Big smooch. <laughs> mm. There you go.